Come on. Read a psalm with me. Read a psalm with me. Please get your perfect, inerrant, infallible, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Huh, read a psalm. Follow me along at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, uh, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Follow me along because sometimes my mouth goes quicker than my brain. I gotta say that all the time. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay? Make sure I'm telling you the truth. If you got if if some point in this video you got a question about the context, pause the video and search the context on your own time. Okay? Please. You you do remember this is our authority. The authorized version. Man is not our authority. This is our authority. And because this is our authority, and we saints have the Lord within us, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? We can speak in that authority of Scripture because the Lord who wrote the Scriptures lives within us. That's prophesying today. That's spoke about in 1 John chapter 4. Okay? The Lord within me, or within you, you speak to others the scripture, the completed canon of scripture. The Lord in you speaks to others through the scriptures, hence the spirits identify, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Well, why do you think the enemies of our Lord rarely use the scriptures? And they strain at a net, swallow a camel. And that's something. And that's something. More on that in another video. But today, right now, please turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. I am going to share with you what the Lord shared with me this morning in an expository fashion, Psalm 82. Okay? I'm going to share with you what the Lord shared with me. Okay? We are going to have an expository, expository look at Psalm 82. Okay? Even though the concept of what we are going to be looking at is milk, this is going to be a meat look. <laughs> with every pun intended, a meat look at Psalm 82. Like I said, I'm going to share with you what the Lord shared with me. Okay? So, uh, three minutes and 40 seconds of an introduction, as it were. Oh, by the way, if you got like a ribbon marker or something, today's the day to use it. Psalm 82, verses 1 and 2. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the little g gods. Oh, you mean like Zeus and whatnot? No. No, we'll, we'll explain that in a, in a little bit. Also, in the description box, there will be a video called Ye Are Gods, where we kind of go over this also. Uh, you know, Ye Are Gods, we go through this again. Okay? Uh, but this is, like I said, we're, we're taking a different approach to this today. Sharing with you what the Lord shared with me. Okay? God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Verse 2. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Sit up. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And we are seeing a lot of this, brethren, today. 
We are seeing a lot of what today? Among these professing Christians. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Salah. You see a lot of this. People who purport to be saved entertaining devils because they are wise. Okay? Because they believe themselves wise. And yet they're entertaining or listening to, giving credence to devils, giving them a platform. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Okay? <laughs> verse 2 again in Psalm 82. How long will ye judge unjustly? Judge not. Be in the description box for you. Okay? All right? Judge not on the outer appearance, but judge righteous judgment. What is righteous judgment? It's found here in the scriptures. Okay? Not your feelings, not your opinions, but the authority of scripture. Okay? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, having fellowship, in marriage even, okay? Not being yoked up with unbelievers, okay? We, the saints, are to go to preach unto the lost. We don't invite lost people into our fellowship. We don't do that. That's what Christianity does with the phallus houses, with the Baal houses, okay? And look at the fruit of that. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Well, I believe in Jesus. I'm sure you do. Which Jesus? Which, which one? Huh? Which one? Which Jesus do you believe in? Hmm? The one of the scriptures. Oh, okay. But yet, you don't rightly divide the world. You're against one saved, always saved. You believe that the body of Christ is going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need I continue? Need I continue? I don't think so. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. If you've come to the Lord on his terms, not your own, and he saves you, he seals you until the day of redemption. See, someone who is against eternal security, by the way, they want to justify themselves. Okay? That's, that's the whole gist of someone who is against the scriptural doctrine of today, once saved, always saved. They want to justify themselves. Don't you forget that. And someone who's seeking to justify themselves over the Lord, that's not a brother. That's not a sister. Do you understand? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We've gone over this before, brethren. We have, but in light of recent events and on the unfortunate things that uh, I have been watching before, which I'm done with now, okay, there's only so much filth that a man can take. There really is, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, 
and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Yuck! Okay? And here it is. This is and this is being exhibited today in many of these Christians. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you. What do they do? Hey, we're open to all people. Hey, you want to talk to me about, you know, you know about, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it, the charismatic things? You want to uh, debate uh, elect and non-elect nonsense? You want, to you want to debate with me? I'm open to all. The, the, the legs are spread open for all people. What is it with you people? What is it with you? What? What? What is it? But see, this person who had done this wicked thing, like I've told you many times about this very passage, what were these people doing? It's like, this. hey, we're, we're not judging you. This is when you need to come into our fellowship. This is when you need the church, right? This guy doesn't understand. He's teaching heresy. Talk to him. Out there, you don't bring him in. You go to them. Let's keep reading. For verily, as for I verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Note that lowercase s there. Okay? Note that. Your glorying is not good. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink the water. Know ye not a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Urge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Amen. You are the company you keep, right? writing this down so I can put the links in. Okay, beg your pardon. Yet, not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must he needs go out of the world. Try to find a true saint out there. A saved individual. Oh, so many people believe in Jesus. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? And I, I've encountered this with some beloved brethren. You, you get to a point, it's like, I don't even want to go out there. There's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to meet a saint today. You don't really know that. It's more probable that you're not going to come across an actual saint, a brother or sister of the church of the living God. Okay? Okay, well, I'll give you that. But that doesn't mean that you give up. That doesn't mean that you cease. It doesn't. Saying that for myself, too. There are some times when I want to quit. <laughs> I know a lot of you would like that if I did. But no, that's, that's not up, definitely not up to you. And it's definitely not up to me, either. That's up to the Lord. Okay? But yeah, you, you get to a point where sometimes it's like, like you reach your hand out to someone because you, you know, it's like, dude, you're, you're following devils. And how many of you have had your hand spit on, or bitten, right? I'm going to touch on this in another video, so I don't really want to go off on this, but I understand the argument, both sides. You can't trust people today. You really can't. You can trust your brother and sister in Christ. 
if they are your true brother and sister. But does that mean we hide our heads in the sand? Yeah, the odds that you're going to be going out there and meeting up with a fellow saint of the church of the living God, it's not probable. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it probable? Probably not. But that doesn't mean that we quit. You know? I'm saying that to myself too. And see verse 10, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. See, we are ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. We are to walk according to the scriptures for us today. For when they will not hear the word, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Oh, I can't tell you how many times people like, I don't want to hear it. Fine. Fine. And if they don't want to hear the word, then what else are they observing? Because they are not judging righteously, but they are judging on the outer appearance. You know, in Romans 12, you know, Romans 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, who are you proving that to? But now I have written unto you, not to keep company if any man that is called a brother. You are because you say you are? Who is my brother because you say you are? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, and, they, and these guys, they, they love that. What is that? They love that. Matthew 18, verses 15 on verse 17. That, that's for another video. Just so you know. Just, gonna, just so you know. Because you know. in the next video, uh, we will be addressing the ruthlessness. <laughs> well, we'll leave that at that. We'll leave that until the next video. Okay? But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one known not to eat. For what have I to do to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judges. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Again, the judge not video will be in the description box. I, 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 I know why my deadliest enemy says what he says of a very unfortunate, stupid individual. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. We're not supposed to have fellowship with lost people in any way, shape, or form. Okay? Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Salah. The whoredom of this Christianity today. You know what? I, you know, some of these King James Bible and Christians who, you know, get kind of strict in their stuff. Good for them. Good for them. Good for you. Good for you. I would rather see someone more extreme in their separation than some whore who accepts everybody without any... You know, oh, you're, oh, you say you're my brother? Okay. Okay. But then again, you got to be careful because what happens? You can get too hard and miss a saint who might be needing a fellowship, who needs to hear something that the Lord wants you to give him from him. you got to be careful with that. you got to be careful with that. How many, think about this. How many of us, because of a rightful distrust, of that. How many of us have turned away a babe, brother or sister, who who has, you know, fallen, not fallen away. Lost people fall away. Saved people fall. Okay? Who has fallen 
okay? And the, the situation has been orchestrated where the Lord's like, hey, I put that together for you. I wanted to use you because you've been in that same situation. I've been on the end of these, uh, not, not these guys on YouTube, but in person, okay? I've been on the end of a rebuke, okay? I've been there. I know what that's like. I know. Okay? I know what that's like. Okay? But you've been somewhere before, and the Lord orchestrates something, and yet you rightfully are weary, not trusting, but yet, you know what happens when uh, you don't try? Nothing. Nothing. And nothing ends in N and G. <laughs> Sorry. Verses 3 and 4 in Psalm 82. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Defend the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Romans 15. Romans 15. Romans 15. Verses 1 on verse 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. What makes us strong? Oh, that you got a piece of paper on your wall saying the Satan, the Jesuits say, no, no. What makes you strong? What makes, what is the strength of a saint? Your congregation, your people? No. Your knowledge? No. Your wisdom? What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. What is understanding? The party from evil. Well, what is the strength of a saint? Well, you place here in Romans 15 and go to 2 Corinthians 12. This, this is a no brain. This, well, this ought to be a no brain. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 on verse 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for me, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Then am I strong. What does that mean? 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And see, I have recently seen way too many of these people who are strong in their own selves, in their arguments, in their heretical doctrines. But you know what they don't got? They ain't got the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 4 and verse 6. And such trust have we through Christ the Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves, to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of the capital G, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. When he says letter there, he's referring to the Old Testament law. A lot of heretics will come to this and say, you don't need to read the Bible. Hey, guess what? You're right. You don't need to read a Bible. You need to read the scriptures, the authorized version, the King James Version. Yes, okay? But they come to this and say, you don't need to read the scriptures. You don't need to, the, the letter kills, right? He's talking about the Old Testament law. That's what Paul is referring to, okay? Besides, someone that doesn't want you to read the scriptures don't want you to check them out because if you were to check them out in the scriptures, you'd be like, dude, dude, you're... You're, 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 I'm out of here, man. Verse 6, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the, lowercase s, spirit. For the letter killeth, but the lowercase s, spirit, giveth life. Hmm. There's a capital S spirit, which is the Lord himself, and there is a lowercase spirit that is of the Lord that is something that is imparted. Okay? Alright? You with me? Okay? 
who, has, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not a letter of the Old Testament. You don't have to keep the law today, okay? The law is not binding self-ethically today, okay? Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Okay? Now, go back to Psalm... Oh, no, go back to Romans chapter 15, picking up at verse 1 again. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And that's not smooching his behind. That's not flattery. You show love to your enemies by telling them the truth. But hey, if you don't want to hear the truth and you want to defend heresy, go ahead. Go ahead and may your little Messiah cheer you on as you go headlong, headlong off of a cliff, boy. Sayonara. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience <laughs> and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Look! Uh, look! Look! <laughs> You Christians, huh? This, this is the authority, the authorized version. This is what this is about, the authorized version. The scriptures which tell of the true Lord, our true God, our true Father, Jesus Christ. This is too much for you. Hey, I know quite a few channels that give you a little bird droppings from that stupid third member of the satanic trinity <coughs> that goes ahead and poops on you. Okay? I'll, you go ahead and check them out. Alright? Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 and verse 11. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the capital S spirit, the Lord himself. We already covered that. In 2 Corinthians, okay? If any bowels of mercies. <laughs> Brad, you were pretty unmerciful in that previous video. Yes, I was. Like I said, I'm going to address this in another video coming this week. But I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I have no regrets, no repentance of anything I said of a devil. None. None. Why? Because they have made their choice. They have gone past the point of no return. They are the sworn enemies of our Lord. Paul says, we are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Okay? I have no regrets, nor repentance, of anything I said of a foul, wicked devil who is leading people to hell. I have no regret or repentance over that. None. None. Do you understand? None. None. The only thing that I do regret is that the brethren saw, as was said to me, ruthlessness. That's my only regret. But as far as what I said about a <coughs> devil who's guiding people to hell, uh-uh. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. No, no regret. I don't repent or regret one thing I said of a certain individual who I'm not going to uh, put foul language in my mouth by even saying his name. Okay? Not even going to do that. Just so you know. Verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife and vainglory, which so many of these Christians are doing nowadays. Strife, vainglory, that they may look like a hot shot. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And you know what I like about this? 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And you know what saints, when you talk to a saint, a fellow brother or sister, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, brother, I'm, I'm worse than you are. I'm worse than Jephthah. I'm worse than Nebuchadnezzar. I'm worse than Manasseh. And the devil's like, oh, you're glorifying yourself. No, that's the proper heart. That's the proper heart. That's the brokenness. That you are hopeless. You don't come to the cross with a Christ still on it. Mean, and if Christ is still on the cross, then it's not finished. Okay? But it isn't that you come to the cross with Christ still on it. A Christ still on it and say, I'm sorry, Lord, but I can do better. Give me... No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in... And Bibles messed this up. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Robbery. Okay? Jesus Christ is the Father. He identified himself as the Father. Okay? Jesus, yes, you're right, you heretic devils. Jesus never said, I am God. He didn't have to. He, all he needed to say was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. The Hebraic Jewish people knew exactly what he said. Okay? All right? But made himself of no reputation. He humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yeah, okay. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. flesh die. Okay? Yeah. Even the death of a cross, of the cross, excuse me. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. <laughs> Whose name? Whose name? Hmm? Yeah. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's going to happen at the great white throne when these people who are at the great white throne, everybody is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Absolutely. See, we saints, we already do that. You devils and you heretics, I don't want to be in your shoes, boy. And see, what is being talked about here, Paul touches on this also in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 under verse 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Godliness. And on the other channel, we have several videos talking about godliness and those will be and I wrote it down so I won't forget okay but godliness the doctrine of uh, according to godliness being other than separate than that okay that's the doctrine of godliness that Paul is right that is what Paul is referring to our Lord Jesus Christ he was other separate okay all right Yes, he went among sinners, preaching them, preaching to them. He wasn't hanging out with them, okay? He went to them to preach to them, okay? Like we ought to do unto the lost, okay? Remember, Paul was made all things unto all men, okay? Paul wasn't, didn't take upon him, went in Rome, do as the Romans do. No! No. Okay? Listen, we saints are not to be as the whore of the Vatican and their whoredoms, opening themselves up to all comers. Look, 
I, I, I know y'all, a lot of you thought that was pretty brutal and ruthless. What do you think it's going to be for these devils when they go to hell? In that contrast, you know, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, sometimes you really got to hit some of these people hard with the scripture. What are my ruthless words going to mean in comparison to someone knowingly serving Satan and the Vatican when they go to hell and try to justify themselves at the great white throne? Brother and I were talking the other day. It's like us saints at the judgment seat of Christ. Remember, John the Apostle fall, fell down at the Lord as dead. And you got these stupid Christians saying, oh, when we see Jesus, it's going to be a bro hug. No, 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 no. Everyone is going to give an account to themselves of themselves to God. We saved saints in this dispensation. We're going to do it at the judgment seat of Christ. Where our works are going to be judged for our word, for our rewards. Okay? You read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? After the judgment seat of Christ, which is for saved people, anything else is at the great white throne. That's why, brethren. That's why. Knowing the truth and the reality of the hell because of what the scriptures say that these people are going. That's why sometimes you got to be a little ruthless. If any man teach otherwise and consent not the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, being separate, other. Remember, we saints at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be with our noses on the dirt. How am I going to look the Lord in the eye? But I can bet you, at the great white throne, there are some people going to be coming up out of hell looking like, I don't deserve to be there! You did it! Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. Swallowing and, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, chasing after a gnat and swallowing a camel. I just brad eyes that, forgive me, but. He is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw myself. Back to Psalm 82. Back to Psalm 82. Verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. Neither will they understand. You don't want to. It's like, dude, I, you, you were been warned through the scriptures, but you don't want to understand. You don't want to. You, can, you, you can't do much with that, brethren. It's just like, okay, fine. <laughs> Go along. <laughs> Go along. Uh, have fun storming the castle. Light it up, buddy. Go ahead. Have your best life now. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Foundations. 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 Psalm 11. In man put I my trust. How's <coughs> Follow me along, huh? In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. 
If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? But wait a minute now. What about our foundation? What about our foundation? Hold that thought. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. Dispensational difference here. Okay? Under the law there was a physical temple. Okay? Today, God dwells in temples made without hands. We're going to look at that. Okay? Ye are the temple. We're going to read that. Just hold on. Okay? This is a dispensational difference. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay? Today, this dispensation, the Lord is in his holy temple. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. You know what spirit dwells in these church buildings? Oh, that's that spirit of Antichrist! The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. God has a soul? Really? Really? Yeah, God has a soul. We're, we're made in the image of God, you know. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. We're made in the image of God. You, you, you people out there who don't want to believe the truth of who God is, that's on you. I understand it because, like I, we've talked about before, from the inception of Satan's church, and look that up for your own self. I dare you to! Okay, the primary doctrine that the Catholic Church at its inception started to teach was what? One God within three persons. Contrary to Scripture. Okay? All right? But, <clears throat> yeah, the Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of, the, of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. If the foundation, verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. If you people would simply rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide. You know there's a thing wrongly dividing? Okay? An example. People want to tell you, perfect example, that Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul was writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, there's easy believism heresy for you. Or that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Verses what? Uh, 3 to 11. Is Paul again writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble? Ah. Also, hyper dispensationalism. Saying that they're, and see, hyper dispensationalism, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Okay? There isn't a fixed definition of hyperdispensationalism, but so many heresies go under that thing of hyperdispensationalism. It's it's disgusting. Okay? But but okay, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Salvation changes within the dispensation. God doesn't change, but how God deals with man, that's what changes. And his method of man being made right with him changes within the dispensations. And when you got people who come along saying it's the same way from beginning to end, red flag, red flag, get away from them. But see, you, you talk to one of these Christians about that, they, you just, you, you fart in their general direction, basically. They look at you like, oh. Knowledge is increasing. But I'm sorry to say it like this. Why is it these Christians are getting stupider when it comes to the things of our Lord? Why? Yea, hath God said. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 on to verse 21. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians, uh, yes, verses 11 on to verse 21. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, things that will abide fire, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This is talking about for us saved people who will stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Our works that we do for our Lord, that he calls us to do, those are what will be tried. Okay? If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And that's not purgatory. Okay? That's not purgatory. There's another verse to show you about once saved, always saved. Okay? Look, you come to the Lord on his terms, you devils out there who want to justify yourself to make yourself look good because you're keeping the commandments or doing whatever satanic nonsense, not rightly dividing the word of truth, taking truth from another dispensation and trying to make it relevant today as doctrine for salvation today, okay? It, you go to hell, okay? You come to the Lord on his terms, he saves you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Deal with it. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capital S Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Who is God our Father. Okay? This ain't rocket science. But see, these guys through wisdom, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's continue. Okay? Let's continue. If any man, including yourself, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Holy. Set apart. Okay? That kind of thing. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, and oh boy! <laughs> I, I've, I've put away what the research and looking into this whole disgusting subgenre of these Christians, I've put that away at the, after the last video. It's like, I'm done with it. I can't stand these guys anymore, you know. And you, I have not once commented on any one of their stuff. Not once. Not once. Okay? I won't do that. Okay? I, I rarely even comment on brethren's stuff. Okay? Rarely. Okay? Rarely. But it's like, uh, it's like, I'm a, why, I, you know, what, take a shower. I felt so filthy watching some of these people. Okay? Alright? But a lot of these people, a lot of these Christians are wise in the world. Worldly wise. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool according to the world's standards, that he may be wise. Verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Absolutely. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. And that's where we're going to stop there, even though there's that uh, thing there. And what is this talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. It's a flesh show with these Christians, brethren, people. What can you do? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, just one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise.
do, do we need to expound on that? Proverbs 28, 4-7. Proverbs 28, 4-7. They that now dispensational difference. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men understand not judgment. The only one who can judge me is God. The only one? So don't judge me. Again, we get into that in the judge not video. Okay? If any of you have, never mind, never mind. That's some nitwit trying to, never mind, okay? <clears throat> Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Because we have the source of all truth. Our Lord Jesus Christ that dwells within us and his perfect and errant given by inspiration word. If you don't have a perfect, if you don't have a perfect stand, standard there, Mr. Christian, what is your standard? Your theologians? Yourself? Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich, saying, Gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. But he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. And you can compare that again with 2 Corinthians chapter 6, which we already looked at. Psalm 84. One verse, verse 10. <laughs> For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be here amongst my brethren, saints of the church of the living God, than make, uh, affix myself to the great vast number of Christianity. Because what Christianity today is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. You know, contrary to some of your belief, I will talk to someone in a live stream format. God forbid. No. 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 And they, just like I've told you people, like I've warned you people, what do they do? They act like little kids on a schoolyard. Because you're afraid you can't. You can't do it because you... Nah, 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 nah. Grow up. Grow up, little boy. Grow up. And these are these are from tough guys, right? Hebrews 11, verses 24 and verse 26. <clears throat> By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And you can con continue on in reading, but to prove this point, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 out of verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 out of verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers, he's referring unto the Hebrew people there, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized, identified unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual drink. And did all drink of that same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them. And that capital R rock Christ. Do you not realize that the word Christian means absolutely nothing today? Do you not realize that? Do you not? 
Why defend it? Why? To compare yourselves with others? Or are you an infiltrator trying to show, hey, why? It doesn't mean a thing today. It hasn't for a long time. I'd rather be amongst my own church of the living God, my, my brethren, saints, be amongst them. We, as we've already addressed, we go out there to witness unto them, to preach unto them, but you don't bring lost people into fellowship with yourself. Look what happens. Okay? All right? Now, back to Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. And oh boy, do the charismatics love this. And so do the heretics. All heretics love this verse. Why? Number one, that's a Lord case G. And number two, these idiots, and I'm being polite, when they say, everybody's saved, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> everybody's going to be saved, really? It's in the description box. Check that out. They come to a verse like this. First of all, ye are gods. What is that talking about? Does that mean that, like the charismatics tell you, that you have power in your mouth to create like God does. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 7. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey what God said not to do. Do what God said not to do. See, the very first dispensation in Scripture was all works. Okay? For those of you twits out there, it's like it's, it was faith alone from Genesis on the very first dispensation the Garden of Eden they saw God okay uh, verse 8 and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the, day, of the day how does the voice walk unless he has a body okay come on they saw God in the Garden of Eden they could do anything they want they, they had the, the, the at their fingertips all this fruit, they, they, mankind was first created at least vegetarian. Okay? You can make a valid argument for that. About uh, I, Some even could say they were vegan. And remember, a vegan means absolutely no animal byproducts, such as honey and butter and stuff like that. But at the very least, you could say at the beginning, mankind was created vegan, uh, vi um, <laughs> vegetarian, at the very least. You, right there. Okay? But that's a side point, okay? They had all this. What did God say? Don't eat from that tree. What does Satan do? Yeah, that's God said. Huh? Cornered Eve, got Eve a little perturbed to where she added to the Word of God, okay? You can look at that and read the context. Pause the video, read the context from verses 1. On to verse 7, to what we will be reading to. And then you know what you do? Pause the video uh, and look at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Then unpause it and let's keep going, okay? But, for God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof. Do contrary to what God said. It was all works here. There was no faith involved. They saw God. What faith? Was, what was faith needed for? You saw God. They saw God. It was works only in the very first dispensation. Hence, these idiots, and I'm being polite, who say it's faith alone from the beginning to the end. They're lying to you. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, right? That that's a promise that Satan still makes to these guys today. 
and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And that's an imperative verse. Only God truly knows what is good and what is evil. Yes, we have the law of God written on all our hearts. Yes, we do. Even lost people do. That's called their conscience because you know instinctively, hey, this isn't good. Okay? That does not mean you are saved. Okay? Okay? We talk about that in other videos. But only God truly knows what is right and what is wrong, what is truly good and what is evil. And you know what, dear friend? He tells you so in the scriptures. But see, these idiot Jesuit coadjutors working for the Vatican, yea, have God said, and so on and so forth. Okay? Only God truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. Man in and of himself. We can come close to it, but we as man are fallible because of this, because of sin. Hence, our judgment is flawed, biased, where the judgment of God is perfect. Okay? And it's found right here. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And we who are of the church of the living God, we are to judge others according to the perfect standard. Okay? But, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What was, what was Satan saying? You can judge in yourself what is good and what is evil. When God says clearly one thing, Satan through flesh says, ah, yeah, God, God said, yeah, you, don't worry about it. Okay? In Psalm 82, ye are gods. Not that you can create things with your own mouth, but what does that mean? That now because of the fall, okay, knowing good and evil, okay, disobedience. They did what God said not to do. They knew that was evil. And now, look at us today. That's what ye shall be as gods, not that you are a creator like God forbid. That's what them charismatics teach. No. No. That we are judging. You understand? Okay? Let's keep reading. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and also gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. They were already naked before. But now because they disobeyed, and sin was brought in, now they were ashamed of their nakedness. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Okay? And John 1, John 1, John 1, okay? John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 5. John 1, verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning was the capital W Word, and the capital W Word was with God, and the capital W Word was God. Capital W Word in the authorized version appears seven times. In the Bibles, they appear six times because they take out the Johannian comma, as they call it. Capital W word in the scriptures is always a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Somewhere in the community section, I believe, they're all listed, either on this channel or on the other channel. Okay? The same was, the beginning, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And God said... And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6 in Psalm 82 again. I have said, ye are gods. Knowing good and evil. Be, uh, you know, having the capacity is like to know what is good and what is evil. But yet man in and of himself cannot know unless the Lord tells him. And see, that's the problem. you got so many Christians judging off of their what? Off of themselves. They are their own gods. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Everybody is a Christian! 
I ain't a Christian. I'm a saint of the Church of the Living God. Thank you very little. Okay? But the, the heretics, everybody's saved. Really? Okay, what we just looked at in John, in him, verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. We've talked about this before. People who are alive, they have light in their eyes. When you've looked into the dead body of a man or a woman, and you see their eyes, there's no light. You can see that in, a, uh, in your pet that you kill. Or, put, or, excuse me, put to sleep. Okay? For you kids who may be watching. Okay? Don't sugarcoat it. But anyway, you can see the light in their eyes. Okay? Look, you devils, you lost people, you saints, you are alive today because the Lord has given it to you. You, you have breath, you are alive today because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? You, uh, you two might have fornicated outside of the marriage bed and a child came into this world because of it. That's not a mistake. So what do you do? You go to commit murder and erase what you call a mistake? You're alive because God has allowed it. He is the author of life. That is what that means in Psalm 82, verse 6. Okay? I have said, ye are gods, being able to judge what is good and what is evil. But we can't. Unless the Lord shows us. Okay? And, and all of you are children of the Most High. Meaning that God has given you life today. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Verses 24 on to verse 31. Acts chapter 17 verses 24 on to verse 31. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. <clears throat> Neither is worship with men hand, men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Separation. Distinction. Okay? We all have the blood of man. Our blood, you trace it back far enough, will be traceable onto Adam and Eve. Okay? Yes. But God is a God of distinction. Okay? Could you imagine the horror for you if you all looked like me or I looked like you? Okay? Can you imagine the horror if all dogs were little chabuahuas? What if all horses were zebras? Huh? What if all birds were chickens? Now that would be tasty. But that's not the case, is it? God is a God of distinction. Okay? Alright? That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And he isn't. Come to him the way he has prescribed. For in him we live. You're alive today because the Lord has allowed you to be alive today. Okay? And in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Look you atheist devil. Listen. Doesn't matter of your belief on this subject or not. God created you. Okay? God created you. And the one that you reject, you're going to have to give an account to at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? Your belief on that alone is irrelevant. Because when you die, you're going to go before the Lord and you're going to face judgment. Okay? The one you reject. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, He created all of us, even you. We ought not to think that the Godhead, Spirit's own body, okay, God the Father is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit, the Word made flesh is the body, okay? Easy, simple. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. 
but now commandeth every man everywhere to believe. Are you paying attention? Yeah. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Turn from yourself. It's, you, you can't repent of your sins and then go to the Lord. It doesn't work that way. If I were to hold my loaded 357 at the back of your head and tell you to repent of your sins and go to the Lord, you couldn't do it even if you tried. What are you repenting of? Your self-righteousness. Okay? Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And that assurance that we know we are saved. Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. And if you don't have eternal security, what a wretched, miserable life you have. Okay? I have said, ye are gods. Ver, uh, Psalm 82, verse 6 again. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. And of course... A lot of people who, who want to twist this, you know, you read Isaiah 14, verses 12 under 15, and Ezekiel 28, talk about who their father really is. Okay? Verse 7. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Speaking of Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel 28, verses 1 on verse 10. Ezekiel 28, verses 1 on verse 10. Ezekiel 28, verses 1 on verse 10. For the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, just like his father the devil. And thou hast said, I am a God, capital G. Like Kenneth Copeland and these charismatics. It's like, you have power. You are God. You can create. Shut up. And they go to that to try to prove it. No. No. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. That thou art a man. Mere men. And not God. Though thou said thine heart is the heart of God, you you are because you think you are right. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are because you say you are. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. See, the Lord is talking, addressing Tyrus. But who is he really addressing? Satan. Kind of like similar to what Peter said, you know, to the Lord. And the Lord looked at Peter and said, The Lord rebuke you, the uh, Lord rebuke thee, Satan. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. Thou hast increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations. They shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. We are reading on to verse 10. The rest you can read on your own time.
you know, a lot of these Christians, they think real highly of themselves. Same with the a these atheists. You know, they think real highly of themselves. An atheist. You believe in a God. Yes, you do. Yourself. Just like in Isaiah chapter 14. You will be like the Most High. Okay? <clears throat> you will be like the Most High. <laughs> yes. Verse 7 again. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Okay? One second, please. Sorry about that. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 4 on to verse 8. Again, let's read that over. Uh, Psalm 82 verse 7. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. First Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 on to verse 8. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And like I've said, I've seen way too much. I've seen too much of that recently in the past couple of weeks to fill up a hundred lifetimes, and it's so sickening. Albeit we speak wisdom, the fear of the Lord, among them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect, but who are of a broken and contrite spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak wisdom, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 1, 20 on to 21. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? For they are of the world. Therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. These Christians hear these people because they themselves are of the world, not saved. Okay? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, a wisdom that is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness in the eyes of the world of preaching to, to save them that believe. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Princes. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Who is made alive today by our Lord Jesus Christ? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Saved people. Okay? Who are dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye, uh, ye saved people, we were once, we were once one of those. We can't forget that. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You hear the true gospel and you reject it? You're a child of disobedience. You're a child of wrath. The wrath of God is for you. Okay? God loves you. <laughs> in the description box. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Natural man, unregenerate man, is a child of wrath, a child of disobedience. It's right there. It's right there. Okay? Okay? And Ephesians 6.12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The upper echelons, as it were. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 3 and verse 4. Remember this, brethren. 
because it can be quite disheartening, can it? Yes, it can. It can be very disheartening. But we have to press on. Because if you're alive today, saint, God does have a purpose for you. I believe if the Lord didn't have a purpose for one of his saints, he'd be up there with they, he or she would be up there with the Lord. Because our God is a jealous God. That's why some of these saints who die are waiting for us in heaven. They finished their course. Okay? Like Paul. You know, he knew his time was coming to an end. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. Now I'm going to my crown. <laughs> now I'm going to the Lord. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And you, you read Ezekiel chapter 28, okay, about how every bright stone was the covering of the anointed cherub, Satan, and that he himself is, the, is transformed into an angel of light, and his ministers are transformed as ministers of righteousness, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Finally, verse 8. It's all made to Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. 11 out of verse 15. And I saw heaven open. Behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, as where that man of sin, the son of perdition, has a crown and a bow with no arrows. Okay? And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W, Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And that's us. We go up with him at the redemption of the purchased possession when he says, Come up hither! Okay? We go up. We come back down. It's his army. Okay? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that, which, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Let's read verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hmm. Sword goeth out of his mouth. Okay? Sword. Uh, there have been depictions of an actual literal sword coming out of the Lord's mouth. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Ephesians 6 verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the what? Word of God. And Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Okay? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. That's a person. Person is a spirit, soul and body. Joints and marrow are parts of a body. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. A 
sword proceedeth out of his mouth. He's going to judge you by the word that he has given us. This is what judges you. And we, his saints, are called to judge ourselves first through this very word, yes, but to judge others. The foundation has not been destroyed. But see, Satan is a liar and the father of it. And what has happened today? Because of yea hath God said. Matthew 7, verse 24 on to verse 27. Therefore, whosoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Lowercase r, of course. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And sand, and you look at it, is made up of microscopic little rocks. You know the little rocks? Okay? And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. Great was the fall of it. And note in this context the doing, because in the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. So, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you to you, brethren. Uh, those of you who watch this, thank you for watching this if you do. Please keep each other in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. We need all the prayers we can get. Okay? Still don't know if we're going to make it through this month. We don't know. That's up to the Lord. Okay? And do keep each other in your prayers. Pray for one another. I do wish a lot of the brethren who I have fellowship with would contact each other more often than they do. But it is what it is. Thank you for watching this. If you do, again, I love you. Thank you, brethren, you saints, who pray for us. We pray for so many of you. And uh, like I said, just wanted to share this with you, what the Lord shared with me about this. Thank you. See you in the next video.